this is the second video on Isaac Newton's The Method of Fluxions and Infinite Series. What we did in the previous video was talk about how certain quantities, which Newton calls the compound quantities, I think I was mistakenly using the term complex quantities, but Newton uses the word compound quantities, but how these can be converted or thought of as power series. And we provided a few different examples of where quantities such as 1 over 1 minus x, which can be sometimes converted to the power series 1 plus x plus x squared or plus x cubed and so on, how these quantities can be thought of as power series. And we also used power series to extract roots from some equations. That is to estimate the square root of something like a squared plus x squared. And in this video, we're going to continue with a bit more computation. And what we're going to do is talk about how Newton approximates the roots to polynomial equations. And nowadays, uh, this technique is very well known to calculus students, which is called Newton's method. This is the method we use to approximate roots to polynomial equations. That is, if I had some polynomial equation like x cubed plus 6x minus 1 equals 0, Newton's method might allow you to approximate a solution to this polynomial equation. Let's talk about Newton's method for approximating roots uh, using an, an actual example. Now, this isn't the example that he uses in the text, but we'll get to that eventually. Suppose we want to estimate the square root of 2. That is to say, we're looking for a quantity such that when it's squared, let's call it x, when it's squared, is equal to 2. Now, we could think in terms of this equation as solving for x. We have the equation x squared being equal to 2. But equivalently, we can move that 2 to the left-hand side and rewrite this equation as x squared minus 2 equals to 0, is equal to 0. And now, if we're able to find the root, or one of the two roots of this, of this quadratic equation, that x, which solves this equation, is going to be one of the square roots of 2. So now what we've done is we've translated the question of finding the square root of 2 into finding a root of a polynomial equation, namely the polynomial x squared minus 2. And now we're going to bring in Newton's method for approximating roots to this equation. As is normally talked about with Newton's method, what we first do is make a guess as to what the solution to such a polynomial equation might be. And if we want to take a guess, we could say, uh, let's let x be equal to 1. So we plug in x equals 1, and we get 1 squared minus 2 is equal to 0, which is going to be negative 1 which is, of course, not equal to 0. But we see that the guess of 1 is too small. So let's try the guess of 2. Let's plug in x equals 2. So you get 2 squared minus 2 is supposed to be equal to 0. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, and 2 is not equal to 0. But we see that 2 is too big. But what we've learned is that the square root of 2 is going to be in between 1 and 2. 2 is uh, too big of a guess, and 1 is too small. So the square root of 2 is going to be somewhere in between. So let's use as our initial guess for the square root of 2, x equals 1.5, just something in between. And now, if we plug in 1.5 into this polynomial equation, x squared minus 2, we get 1.5 squared minus 2, which is equal to 2.25 minus 2 which is equal to 0.25, which is, of course, not equal to 0. So we know that 1.5 is not the exact root of this equation. So what Newton does, is he says that, okay, let's tack on an additional correction factor, p. That is, the true root, x, is going to be equal to the quantity 1.5 plus some additional unknown correction factor. And now let's try to better estimate what this correction factor is. Because if we can estimate this, this p-value, this correction factor, 
we can get a better approximation to the true root, to the true square root of 2. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 1.5 plus p into x. We're just going to substitute this quantity into our polynomial equation. So we're going to have 1.5 plus p all squared minus 2 equals 0. And remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to better estimate what p is. Ideally, we'd like to solve for p, but let's estimate it. And now I'm just going to expand this out. You get 1.5 squared plus 2 times 1.5p plus p squared. Just using a binomial theorem on that, on that sum there. And then I get minus 2 equals 0. And now I'll just write this in a quadratic form. I have p squared. Over here, I'm going to have plus 3p. And then for the final term, I'm going to have 1.5 squared, which we saw is 2.25 minus 2, which is equal to 0 0.25. So now we have a quadratic equation in P. But what Newton does here, and this is the idea, or the sort of insight here, is he makes the assumption that our guess was pretty good. And if our guess was pretty good, this value of P should be quite small. So what he's going to do is he's going to say that higher degree terms in p, or the unknown quantity, such as p squared, is going to be approximately 0 with respect to the lower degree terms. That is, in this polynomial equation, the greater quantities are going to be 3p and 0.25, and this p squared is going to be relatively insignificant. So what he essentially does is he neglects it. And what, what you do, or what you obtain when you neglect it like that, is a linear equation, which is 3p plus 0.25 equals 0. And now the, the benefit of neglecting that p-squared term is that this equation is very easy to solve for p. And of course, when you solve this, you obtain negative 0.25 over 3, which is equal to minus a 12. Now we've estimated this p as being minus 112, but it's important to point out that this value of negative 112 does not exactly solve this quadratic equation. It's only an approximation to solving it. But what we've now obtained is a better approximation to the square root of 2, because we started out with a quantity 1.5, and we saw that this p value is approximately minus a 12. And now when you calculate that thing out, what you'll obtain is 1.416 repeating. And this quantity is going to be approximately the square root of 2. So you can see that we started with, I guess, 1.5. We noticed that 1.5 is not exactly the square root of 2. So we added on that correction factor, and then we tried to estimate that correction factor. But now, in estimating this correction factor, if we go back to that uh, quadratic equation, our correction factor is not exactly minus 12. So now what Newton does is he says that correction factor, minus 12, is not exactly the correction factor, or it's not exactly the solution to this quadratic, but it deviates from it by another unknown correction factor, which we'll call q. And now you're going to play the same game. You're going to take that value of p, substitute it into this polynomial equation here. When we substitute that quantity minus 12 plus q into this equation, we get minus 12 plus q all squared plus 3 times that same quantity, minus 12 plus q. And then plus 0.25 is equal to 0. And now you play the same game. You expand out all the stuff here. And I'll just give you what quadratic equation results from this. You're going to get q squared plus 2.83 repeating times q. 
and then that last term is going to be plus 0 0.00, 0 six, nine, four repeating is equal to zero. And now we make that same approximation that Q is going to be relatively small, which means that the higher order terms in Q, such as that term Q squared or any higher order uh, power of Q is going to be approximately zero and can be neglected. And the equation that results from this is 2.8 3 repeating q is equal to, and I'm going to move that to the other side, minus 0 0.00694 repeating. And now you just divide both sides by 2.83 repeating. And the exact fraction that you get from this is minus 1 over 408. And now we tack that on to what Newton calls uh, this quote here, this uh, chain of estimations using all the additional correct correction factors. So now we get that our new approximation to the square root of 2 is going to be 1.5 minus the 12 minus 1 over 408. And let's see what we get when we calculate that. We get... 1.414215686, at least to the first few decimal places. And you can see that this is becoming a better and better estimate for the square root of 2. We can already see that 414 starting to show up there. Hopefully at this point, you can see the computational strategy that Newton is using. We make this initial guess. We notice that it's off by some correction factor. We tried to estimate the correction factor, but we notice that that too is off. So we incorporate another correction factor. We try to estimate that, but now just to continue this one step further, that, cor that correction factor Q was found to be approximately negative one over 408, but that one is off too. So we're gonna add on an additional factor R and at each point, you end up substituting this into another polynomial equation that you obtain in this calculation. And an important distinction here to draw is that when we substitute these new values, such as q being equal to this plus r, or even p is equal to minus 12 plus q, we substitute these expressions into a new polynomial equation. That is, we don't take these values and substitute them back into the original polynomial equation. At this point, I'd like to show you how what we've been doing does relate to our modern formulation of Newton's method. Uh, let's return to our initial problem, was that we had this polynomial equation, x squared minus 2, and we are trying to approximate the roots of this polynomial equation. Now, instead of working with numbers, let's work with symbols only. Now, let's say we make some initial guess. Let me call it x naught. And in our case, x0 happens to be 1.5, but let's leave it in the abstract. We have this initial guess, x0, and let's suppose it's not the exact root. And what we're going to do is the same as what we did before. We're going to suppose that it deviates from the true root by some unknown correction factor, p. And I'd like to better know what this correction factor is. So what I'm going to do is substitute this quantity, x0 plus p, into x. So I get x0 plus p squared minus 2 is equal to 0. And I just square this quantity here and get x naught squared plus 2x naught p plus p squared minus 2 is equal to 0. And now I apply that approximation that p is going to be fairly small. So this term p squared is going to be fairly small, so I'm going to neglect it. And I obtain the new equation, x naught squared plus 2x naught p minus 2 is equal to 0. And now I simply solve for p. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the minus 2 to the right. I'm going to move the x not squared to the other side. And we're going to get 2 minus x not squared. And then I'm going to divide through by 2 x not. So p is going to be equal to 2 minus x not squared over 2 x not. So this ratio that we've just uh, calculated, this is an approximation to that correction factor p. So now let me substitute that p into that expression. So you get x naught plus 2 minus x naught squared over 2 x naught. And now what do we usually do? We say that x naught was our first guess. And now x naught plus this additional correction factor is equal to an updated version of the guess called x1. And now, if you haven't noticed already, it's no coincidence that in the numerator, we're getting something that looks like the initial polynomial. And in the denominator, we're getting something that looks like the derivative of this polynomial. So let me rewrite this in a slightly different form. So I have x naught plus. Now this is going to be not f of x naught, but minus f of x naught. And then over f prime of x naught. We see it's quite remarkable here that we're incorporating derivatives already because we haven't really talked about tangent lines or anything quite yet. And it's quite remarkable that this approximation here getting rid of the p squared term leads to something like a derivative showing up here. And then let me rewrite this as x naught minus f of x naught over f prime of x naught. And that's going to be our updated guess x1. And then of course, if you want to continue on, you have x2, which is going to be equal to x1, minus the same thing. You just follow through the same calculation. It's going to be f of x1 over f prime of x1. And in general, x sub n is going to be equal to x of n minus 1 plus, uh, minus f of x n minus 1 over f prime of x n minus 1. And this is the, the modern way of writing uh, Newton's method. But you can see where it's coming from algebraically. It's coming from trying to form an estimate for this new correction factor and neglecting some terms along the way, neglecting these higher order terms. And that's what causes expressions that are the derivatives of the initial polynomial equation to start showing up. But this is an alternative way of thinking of it, because uh, normally when you present this in, in a calculus class, you, you try to derive this expression based upon some sort of graphical argument. That is, you draw out some curve like this. Uh, let's say this is the x-axis. So the true root is going to be there. And then you, you make some sort of graphic argument. You say, OK, let me, let me call that estimate x0 and then I trace it up to the curve, and then I estimate the tangent line there, and then I write down the equation for this tangent line, and then you, you work through some algebra, but you end up getting to the same expression. Well, we've obtained this sort of expression just using a, an algebraic sort of argument. No, no graphs or pictures needed here. The last thing I'd like to do in this video is investigate one more polynomial equation, just to convince you that this denominator that we're obtaining here is actually the derivative. It's not just some coincidence that we got 2x for that one particular example, that this denominator is actually going to be the derivative of the initial polynomial equation. Uh, it's not a proof in all cases, but it's, it's a sort of plausibility argument. And what I'm going to do is consider uh, some arbitrary cubic equation. So we're going to have x cubed plus a x squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. And I'm going to attempt to estimate the roots of this polynomial expression. So I'm going to play the same game. I'm going to estimate 
or I'm going to take that initial guess, which I'll call x0, and the x0 is, going, is not going to be exact, so I'm going to tack on that additional correction factor p. I let this whole expression be equal to x, and I substitute this expression x0 plus p into the initial equation, the initial polynomial equation. So what do I get? Get x0 plus p cubed plus a x0 plus p squared plus b x0 plus p plus c is equal to 0. And now I'm going to use the binomial theorem on this quantity. This is going to be x0 cubed plus 3 x0 squared p plus 3 x0 p squared plus p cubed. And then we've already dealt with expressions like that before, so this is going to, be, going to be a x0 plus a, actually 2a x0 p, and then a p squared. And I just distribute here, I get b x0 plus bp plus c is equal to zero. And remember what we're trying to do here. We're trying to solve this new cubic, which is and that's now a cubic written in terms of p. We're trying to estimate what p is. And what we're going to do, this is actually the generalization of this approximation scheme, is uh, neglect terms that have p squareds and p cubes in them just like we neglected p squared in the previous case of dealing with uh, x squared minus 2, we're also going to neglect the p cubed terms as well. And what happens when we make that approximation? We get rid of that term, we get rid of this term, and we get rid of this term. And what are we left with? We have this term, this term, and this term that, have, that are first order in p, so I'm going to combine those together. I'm going to get 3x0 squared plus 2ax0 plus b all times p. And then what terms do we have left? So we have plus x0 cubed. We have this one here plus a x0 squared, we have plus b x0, and then plus c is equal to 0. And now we're doing the same things we have been doing. We're going to try to solve for p. So we have p is going to be, I'm going to bring this, 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 and this term to the other side, so they're going to flip sign. I'm going to have minus x0 to the third minus a x0 squared minus bx0 minus c, and then divided by, I'm going to divide by this coefficient sitting out in front, which is 3x0 squared plus 2ax0 plus b. And now I have an approximation for what p is, so I'm going to come back up to this. I have x0 plus this new quantity that I just found. And just to clean this up, I'm going to pull out that negative sign in the numerator. So I'm going to get x0 cubed plus a x0 squared plus b x0 plus c. And then divided by 3x0 squared plus 2a x0 plus b. And then just to remind you of what our notation is. We have this first guess, x0, uh, minus some additional correction factor, and this becomes our new guess, x1. But let's observe that this numerator is precisely this polynomial equation here, but with x0 substituted there. So we have x0 minus f 
of x0. And let's also observe that this denominator here is indeed the derivative of this polynomial equation. If we were just to take the derivative, we get 3x squared for that term. We would have plus 2ax and then plus b. And that's exactly what we have here. So we have divided by f prime of x0. And this is all equal to x1. So we see that in the case of the, the cubic, that it's no coincidence that this denominator is coming out to be the way it is, that it is indeed the derivative of the initial cubic equation. Speaking of neglecting things, I neglected to mention that if you're following along in a text, that all the stuff I've been talking about in this video is going to be found under the initial part of the section called uh, reduction of affected equations. And the example that Newton uses, which uh, I want to leave it as, as more of an exercise, I just want to talk about the main ideas in this video instead of going through uh, exactly what Newton is saying, but I just want to present Newton's ideas. The example that he uses of a polynomial is actually x cubed minus 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. And he tries to approximate a root, which is, uh, it's around, it's, it's about 2. And he's able to do it using precisely the methods that we've been talking about. But instead of uh, just regurgitating what Newton is saying, uh, I just want to present his ideas in the method of functions. And I think that'll wrap it up for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, feel free to like it and subscribe to my channel. And also stay tuned for more videos on Newton's method of fluxions. Thanks for watching.